Well, hi everyone, welcome to Word of Power. This is Evangelist Joel Torres, and for those of you joining me for the very first time, welcome, and I hope that you'll be encouraged today through the word that I'm going to be speaking on. Um, I also want to let you know that, uh, you know, as you know, uh, most of you know that I have another broadcast program that I'm hosting alongside with Mr. Mike Bearded. Hey, I want to let you know that we have that, the second broadcast, already up and running. I hope the first one was a blessing. We're continuing, we're continuing the series of Psalms 139. And I'm telling you, we're going to be talking about uh, becoming the new creation in Christ and uh, the elements it takes to really come into that place of understanding and having the knowledge of what that really means. And I'm telling you, I would really strongly suggest to watch that, uh, the link that you see below the screen when you have time to see that. Because what I'm going to talk today is also going to be able to really re be re uh, very relatable to what I'm talking about today. But well, today is called When He Laid His Eyes on You. What is it that God has seen that He saw in you when He first laid His eyes upon you? So we're going to talk about that and, and the different aspects of that and the perspective of what God sees and what He continues, continues to see and what He's doing about what He sees. Okay? So I want to just encourage you. You know, today, I guess you could say we live in disruptive times. You know, and what I mean by that is that our peace has been disrupted. Our joy has been disrupted. Our finances has been disrupted. Marriages have been disrupted. Faith and our belief, uh, and, you know, has been disrupted. And we're questioning what we believe in today, you know. And, and most important, what I see too has been disrupted, is our time and relationship with God has been disrupted. Because there are so many things going on trying to disrupt, the, uh, uh, disrupt our lives. And that's the plan of the enemy. And you know... Today, people are looking for something trustworthy. They're also looking uh, for something that will give them verification as to what's next, what, how do, what's the next thing that they do uh, to, uh, to help their lives. Uh, how do they pray? What's, how do they carry on? And they're looking for some sort of verification of their hope and their future. But I want you to know that God is trustworthy. His word is trustworthy. And I want you to know that he will verify it through his word today. So I want you to just uh, begin to uh, just really listen and hear and be encouraged today. Because I know that we're living in those times. You know, Jeremiah lived in a really bad time. If you talk about disruptive times, uh, that's the time that Jeremiah... You know, Jeremiah was appointed by God to be a prophet. And this was the worst time recorded in Jewish history. This was the time, or this was the fall of Jerusalem. And here, here at this disruptive time, <laughs> Jeremiah had to be a prophet. And he had to preach the word, uh, uh, really stick to what he's saying, and, and believe every word he's saying. And at the same time, he's got all these, all these uh, thoughts of, of, uh, of questioning the, the thoughts of what he's thinking. And so it's a very trying time and a difficult, uh, difficult time for, for uh, Jeremiah to be the prophet when Jerusalem is falling apart. And so, uh, you know, that's sometimes that's what it seems like right now. Uh, there are so many things that are uncertain right now. And, you know, many people are going through so many things. I don't know why, but it seems that God is continuing to give me this ongoing theme of, of the plans he has for us and the victories he has for our tomorrows. And so I strongly suggest that you see the broadcast that Mike and I just finished doing if you have a chance, because you're going to see this is going to be very relatable to what I'm talking about today. Understanding and becoming that new creation in Christ, but then also knowing the power that it possesses and the promises and benefits it has to having the knowledge of what that really means. So watch it uh, if you can. Uh, I would strongly suggest it, and you'll see how this relates to this tonight, uh, today as I talk about this word. When he laid eyes on you. When he first laid eyes on you, what is that he saw? So we're going we're gonna to go through that, but I'm going to read out of Jeremiah 1. And this is a time when Jeremiah was just a child. Now, I wanted to come and approach this as a child because we are the children of God. And you know, we have that childlike uh, response sometimes when things are negative and we're not sure. And we need that reassurance, as I said. We're looking for something trustworthy. So I, wanna, I want us uh, to go to Jeremiah, uh, um, Jeremiah 1. Uh, from uh, verses 5 through, um, I believe, uh, 11. And uh, so I'm going to break it down a little bit. Let, let me just read uh, um, Jeremiah uh, um, verse 5, and it says this. 
Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations. That's what I had in mind for you. <laughs> oh my. Uh, look, you know, God has something in mind for you. I, I love this. Uh, so let me read. Um, so here God says, hey, I knew you before, before I, you even were in the womb. I knew all about you. And so, you know, in Psalms 139, um, 15 through 16, you know, God says this. Look at this. My frame was not hidden from you when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. Oh, my. You know, no matter what stage of life you're in right now, God has all had something in mind for you. No matter what you're facing today, God has a plan. You know, God has something in mind. The very He already knew all about your your tomorrows. And, and you know, in Psalms uh, 139, in verse 16, the, the another translation is, uh, you ordained all the days of my life. What is that? That God had ordained victories for your tomorrows. No matter what stage of life you're in today, economically or wherever you're at, understand that God has a plan. God has already something in mind just for you. Why? Because he already knew all about your life. He knew exactly the type of difficulty that you would be going through. He, he, he has a solution for everything ahead. <laughs> so guys just wants you to know, hey, I have already something in mind for you. Look at this. It just gets better. And then also in Ephesians uh, 1, chapter 1, verse 4, and it says this, even as his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as he uh, uh, as his own, excuse me, in Christ before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him, and blameless in his sight, even above reproach before, even above reproach, excuse me, reproach, <laughs> boy, okay, before him in love. Now look at this, uh, look at, now down here in Jeremiah, it says, I had holy plans for you. What does holy mean? It means it means something sacred. You to God is something sacred to Him. You are very sacred to, sacred to Him. You're consecrated. You're blessed. You're sanctified. That's what holy means. And He has a plan for something. When He saw you, what? You were holy and you were blameless. That's how God sees you right now. And, and through having Christ in our life, we are exactly that to Him. He's ex he sees us exactly what he l first laid his eyes upon us. Now, he uh, and and just understand that what that you're that you're holy to him, that you're sacred to him. So that means you're endearing to him. Amen. So look at this um, and know that he has something already in mind for you. And then Jeremiah, as a child, says, "But I said, hold it, Master God. Look at me. I don't know anything. I'm only a boy." <laughs> You know, sometimes we come just like a child with great uncertainty, you know. And, um, and here uh, he's saying, I don't know anything. We, you know, just like Jeremiah, sometimes we're at a stage of vulnerability. We feel, we feel vulnerable. And, uh, you know, uh, it reminds me of my grandson. You know, this is... Uh, uh, this summer, he was learning how to swim and advanced uh, to get better in the swimming. And uh, there were times of what, through the lessons, then at times I'd be in the pool with him, kind of reinforcing those things he was learning, uh, learning how to put his whole head underwater, not just <laughs> up to his eyes and up, up there, go down deep, you know. And, you know, and, and there was that assurance and that little fear, that hesitation of, of going down. And, and just like he calls me Papa, his Papa's there to reinforce everything's going to be okay. Don't worry, everything's going to be fine. So you can do it. <laughs> Look at what God says uh, on that. And you know, my grandson took on that as being a word of being trust, trustworthy. And when he began to do it more and more, the verification that he could do it was right there. Because <laughs> he, he trusted Papa. And we, want, we need to trust our Papa. We need to... Uh, trust our Father in heaven, and that's what God exactly wants to look. What He what He says to Jeremiah, and this next uh, set of verses. 
And he says, God told me, don't say I'm only a boy. I tell you, I'll tell you where to go and you'll go there. I'll tell you what to say and you'll say it. Don't be afraid of a soul. I'll be right there looking after you, God's decree. Oh my gosh, praise God. You know, uh, sometimes we're unsure of our direction and just like Jeremiah, as I said, uh, uh, God is reinforcing, hey, you're, uh, don't worry, I have you covered. I'm watching you. My eyes are upon you. Now, talking about that, let's go to Jeremiah. Same, uh, uh, Jeremiah, um, uh, let's see, what do I have here? Yeah, uh, Jeremiah 1.11. Look what he says here. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree, the emblem of alertness and activity blossoming in late winter. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well. I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Oh, and I like what the Message Bible says at the very last verse in 12. It says, and God said, good eyes. I'm sticking with you. I'll make every word I give you come true. Oh, my God. <laughs> Understand that God's word is on you. What is he watching? He's watching the word, the very word that he gave, the very word that he spoke over you, over your life, the very word that he spoke over your tomorrows. He's watching, and he will make sure and to perform, and to, he's going to be alert. He's on the case <laughs> over, your, over your life, okay? He's on the case, and he's watching with great alertness, and he's going to perform that word to ensure that it comes true, that it, it that you fulfill what He designed you to do. Know that God designed you to win. Know that God designed you to be more than a conqueror. Know that God designed you to be the head and not the tail. Oh, amen. And so God is watching what? His Word, the Word that He spoke over you. Now let's reinforce this with what's next in these last uh, couple of verses. Um, in Jeremiah 9 through 10. And look at this. Uh, so let's see. Let me read it. Oh yeah. God reached out, touched my mouth, and said, Look, I've just put my words in your mouth. Hand delivered. See what I've done? I've given you a job to do among nations and governments. A red letter day. Oh, oh a red letter day. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you know, so God is, is, is working, He's moving, He's given you that word, He's hand-delivered it. He's personally hand-delivered the word in you and put it in, in your mouth. So God has given you the power to speak into your circumstances. God is watching that whatever you speak that comes from, that came from His mouth and put it in yours, He's going to make sure and back up the word that you speak out and with authority and with great uh, uh, reverence and understand that you have that authority to speak that word. Why? Because you were created in the likeness because you've been adopted. You're a child. You have a birthright to that word. And as you speak it, God's going to back it up with his authority. Amen. So God has given you something to do. When it looks like there's nothing, God's got something for you. And God is moving. In these last days so he's he's moving on your behalf he's watching the word he's spoken over you and he will perform him perform it why because he's active he's on the case <laughs> amen praise god now look at this uh, in uh, proverbs uh, chapter 2 uh, verse 6 and 7 it says for the lord gives wisdom and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding he holds victory in store for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in blameless. And so here we go. In Ephesians 4, we see that what God first, when he laid his eyes upon you, what you were holy and blameless. Amen. God is watching with great intent. And know that God has given you his word. He hand delivered it. And it's going to be a red letter day. I mean, when you see the red letters in the Bible, when you read, it comes directly from the mouth of the Lord. Oh, and you're speaking the words that he will speak into, into the mountains that you face. And he's given you that inheritance of the power of his word. 
and so that your tomorrow will be something of great victory. Amen. So, oh, praise God. So understand that he's got victory in store for you. So he's already ordained the victories for your tomorrow. Amen. And then Jeremiah uh, 10, look at this. Uh, 110, look at this, what it says. He says, see, I have this day appointed you to, to the oversight of the nations and of the kingdoms to root out and pull down, to destroy, and to overthrow, to build, and to plant. Oh, my gosh. So what is God saying right here? He's telling you right now, yeah, you live in disruptive times, but I've designed you to be the disruptee to the disruptive times. Oh, amen. Well, I love what it says here. Look at this uh, this other interpretation for the message Bible. It says to pull up and tear down, take apart and demolish, and then start over building and planting. Oh, you know, sometimes God has to put us in a place where everything gets leveled. And then God says, now let's start with the real plan. Let's start over, let's start building, and start planting. Amen. And why? Because God has given you the authority to pull down the strongholds of the enemy and to and to destroy things and demolish the works of the enemy. And the things that has come against you, God has given you authority. What? To be more than a conqueror. To be, as I said, the head and not the tail. I mean, to be the overcomer and, and, and to overtake in Jesus' name through his word that he had delivered to you. What? For you to become the disruptee in the disruptive times that we live in. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. I hope that uh, this has been encouraging to you. I just want you to just take what I've said today. I want you to just meditate in it. And the word says, Sila, meditate in it and get it in your spirit and, and just receive it and know that God is watching over you because his word is attached to you and he, he is active and he is on the case and he will perform the word that he has already decreed because he has his eyes on you. Amen. Well, God bless you. I hope this has been encouraging. Please be, uh, be sure to send in any prayer requests at jtorsministries at msn.com. Please subscribe to our channels and any website that you see. And I really want to just, again, just emphasize to watch the broadcast that Mike and I put together on what's he been telling you lately. I'm telling you what I've just spoke about today will also just really coincide what I'm saying and really just broaden the, the vision in you that you need and to bring great encouragement and understand that you can be the disruptive during these disruptive times. <laughs> well, until next time, God bless, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.